This day I commit my life unto you. None of me, but all of you. May you speak through me. And your will be a blessing to your people. May there be deliverance. May there be healing. May there be revelation. May there be a touch, oh God. May there be strengthening to the one that is hurting this morning. May you heal. May you restore. In the name of Jesus. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning I have a word, a very brief teaching. And it's entitled, Desire God's Goodness. And His kindness will be shown to you. Somebody say, Desire God's Goodness. And His kindness will be shown to you. Hallelujah. You see, ladies and gentlemen, at the crossover night, about the day, the, the hours before the, the service, God just opened my understanding to this particular verse in Psalm 23, where the psalmist, just after he has looked at the Father, God is my shepherd, and I shall not want. And he said, He makes me lie down in green pastures, He restores my soul. Now, if you look at, you know, Bible theologians also want you to look at the context within which the psalmist, the psalm was declaring this prayer. And you can see that the psalmist is looking around himself. He says, oh, desperation, that is lack, that is hopelessness. But he just bursts out and says, God is my shepherd. And I shall not want, hallelujah. Amen. You see, because for somebody to just get up and open up his mouth and say, the Lord is my shepherd. He's looking at the circumstances. Yes. Are you with somebody? Yes. It's always good to get a contest. Somebody say, get a contest. Yes. You see, the Bible is written in a contest. The Bible is full. You see, we have the various aspects of the Bible. We got God's creation. God at work. God with Israel. God's working with the Israelites. Prophetic revelations. Then you see the Psalms. Then you see the acts of the record of the kings and, and all the men and the prophets. So you are coming across the Ezekiel and the, and, the, and the Jeremiah's and the Hosea's and the Amos's and you come down to the Daniel's. These are all prophetic words. Now you come to the work of Jesus. You come to his birth. You come to what he himself did. The, the gospel. Then from there, the work of the apostles in the acts of the apostles. From there, Pauline letters. All the letters that Paul wrote to churches. Churches. Thessalonica, Galatia, Ephesians, uh, Colossae, and, and all those places that Paul visited, and especially Rome and Corinth. So they are letters that Paul wrote to churches like us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory be to God. Yeah. And this morning, the Lord wants us to encourage ourselves. That let people know that I am a good God. Somebody say, God is a good God. God, is a good God. Your God, our God, is a good God. And therefore, when the shepherd is best, I just say, the Lord is my shepherd. And then verse 6, he just says, surely. That's right. Oh, somebody say, surely. surely. Can we see that verse on the board, brother? Psalm 23, verse 6. He says, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. And as I meditate on this spirit, this verse of scripture, all throughout the period, we used it to pray last weekend. And then this morning, the Lord wanted me to take it to another dimension. You see, just as he said, goodness will follow him. Now, what follows somebody? What follows? Something that is alive. Something that has life follows, isn't it? <laughs> Are you with me this morning? I want to take you to another level. As our sister Ryan, the minister Ryan said, that the choir is into another level this year. Amen? Amen. He said, Surely, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. He has already evaluated his circumstances. And then he's calling to say, The Lord is his shepherd. Because he sees that God is provided. He sees that he will not lack, he will not lack any good thing. Because God is supplying. Hallelujah. And then he's, he's supplying. He said, you see, not just that he's supplying. The way he's doing is that he has been leading me somehow, somehow onto green and pastures. Amen. Oh, may somebody receive some green, green and pastures. Some green and pastures for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Somehow, somehow, God will lead you onto your what? Green and pastures. Amen. The message Bible says, onto quiet waters. Where you can sit on the quiet waters and you hear the bird chirp, big, and you fly around and you hear the drop. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Tick, 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 and it's so peaceful and quiet. And if we look around, and there's some goodies over there. Hallelujah. Amen. This year we desire God that good will be done to us. Amen. Desire God that you will receive goodness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, it has become, I don't know whether it's our cultural setup or the way we are raised. Hardly do we expect goodness. And at this point, I've chopped to another somebody. Expect, do to your right hand, left or right, as a sister, brother. Expect some goodness. Desire goodness. And expect kindness to be shown to you. This year, of all years, I ask you, sister, expect some kindness to come your way. Receive God's kindness. Receive God's goodness. Hallelujah. If God is a good God, then desire to receive God's goodness. And also express some kindness to be shown to you. That means, what is your position of kindness? Oh, but. Aha! Go again, sister, minister. What is your position of kindness? Wickedness. wickedness. That means wickedness is far away from me. So we say wickedness is far away, away from me this year. This year. Wickedness, wickedness of any time, of any from anywhere, of any from any source of any is out of my way. of my way in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. You see, the enemy wants us to focus on what? Wickedness. <coughs> He's not inviting kindness. We look on the wickedness. And so all the time, we are looking for what is the wicked thing that is coming. Hey, also make room for some kindness. Amen. Because there's some kindness at the door. Amen. Are you with somebody? Amen. And you'll be surprised to know. Actually, but I'll give you a bit of a bottle. Don't worry, give me a bit of a bottle. This is a, a glorious day. It's cold out there, so let's be hot in the inside. Hallelujah. Amen. Actually, you'll be surprised to know that somebody somewhere is looking to do you some kindness. Amen. Mm -hmm. Do we say that again? Yeah. Somebody is what? Looking for you to do you what? Some kindness. Oh, get out in your spirit. I said somebody somewhere is looking to do you some kindness. And so you should expect to get that kindness. Hallelujah. Don't go and say, ah, these people, they're going to be weak. They are, as they always do. Hey. This time, go and say, they will do me some kindness. Amen. They will be kind to me. Amen. I need some kindness. Glory be to God. No more wickedness. No more wickedness. You say, Pastor, are you getting this from the word? Yes. I'm going to show you some scriptures. This is the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Desire goodness, God's goodness. Because see, for the psalmist, David, to best up in his prayer. He says, surely, now that word is assuredly, confidently, goodness will follow me. It's a declaration of the highest order. Are you with me, somebody? Yeah. It's a declaration. He said, nothing more follows me but goodness. <laughs> nothing else follows me. Wickedness will follow me. Amen. This year is three to six days. You have. Today is the 17th day of the year, of the month of January. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he says, all the days of my life. Now, so this morning as I was just, you know, usually when you're in the bar, the Holy Spirit gave your attention. The Holy Spirit said, you know what? What, what do men spend? What do men spend? Money. Ah, men spend money. The Holy Spirit was just giving you some, a bit of a, a very nice puzzle, a mathematical something. He said, don't men spend, they spend what? Money. Okay. The Bible says that they that be obedient, what would they do? They will wash in the good of the land. And they will also do what? They will spend their days in, where? in prosperity. <laughs> oh, what do men spend again? Uh -huh. The Bible says you spend your days also. We spend our days. Somebody said we spend our days. Uh -huh. And it says, if you are obedient unto me, you will spend your days in where? In prosperity. 
Ha ha! That means prosperity is good. Somebody say prosperity, prosperity. is good. It's good. 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 Hallelujah. Good. So when the psalmist says goodness will follow me, include prosperity. Goodness. The abundant goodness of God must follow you. No more curses. Hey, somebody said no more curses. No more curses. You see, Jesus did the work on the cross of Calvary. He did a good work. The works were complete. The enemy may want to come and try and undo. He can't undo it. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, it is important to get the total picture. Jesus accomplished the work. Whatever the enemy is doing, you know when, when you cut a snake's head, they waggle the tail. The waggling of the tail doesn't is not equal to the lifting of the head and biting. Why is that? Because the head has been cut off. Are you with me, somebody? Yes. Are you getting the, the revelation here? Yes. Somebody say that the, the hair, yes. say the hair yes. of the snake yes. has been cut off. Yes. The wagon yes. of the tail yes. doesn't scare me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Many a time when we tend to focus on his form, we see the enemy wagon his tail. And we say, ah! But you look around and say, well, the hair is already chopped off. <laughs> Where is fear? That's good. That's good. Where is fear? Jesus, he said what? He shall bruise. Go to Genesis. Right. The promise. What did he do? He bruised the head of who? The serpent. I think it's too high. <laughs> he bruised the head of the serpent. He gave us the victory. Hallelujah. Now, you say, Pastor, you say goodness. I say desire goodness, God's goodness, and expect kindness to be shown to you. Let's go to the book of Second Samuel, chapter nine. Second Samuel, chapter nine. I want to show you something. I said that somebody is somewhere out there looking to do you good and show you some kindness. And this year, let your focus change. Wickedness is away from our life. Amen? Amen. Wickedness of any kind. I says I'm a wicked bunch and my prayer is that they will be eliminated. Amen. Annihilated. Amen. They will be taken out. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, I was just watching the news last night and I said at least 250 people have been killed. And I was talking to uh, yeah, our sister and my friend. I said, look at that. These guys are a menace. We trust the Lord that because of God's goodness, we will not be hurt by them. Amen. Shall we read from the ball? This is David, the king. He's doing something. Shall we all read? David said, What? <coughs> David asked, Is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Verse 2. Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. He called him to appear before David. And the king said to him, Are you Ziba? Your servant, he replied, verse 3, the king asked, is there no one still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, there is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in both feet. Verse 4, where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, he is at the house of Michal, son of Amir, in Lodibar. Five, so King David had him brought from Lodibar, from the house of Machil, son of Amir. Six, when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. David said, Mephibosheth, your servant, he replied, don't be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show you up. For whose sake? For the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather. So, and you will always eat at my table. Yeah. 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 Is anybody receiving something like this? Yeah. When you hear a word like this and you want to jump for joy, be on your feet. Do some, some sin things. Hallelujah. Now, the contest. Can you imagine a cripple? A disabled person. You know, Lodibar is a land of outcasts. 
I need to somebody. Yeah. A land where is depravity. Yeah. Okay? There is lack. And, and you see, there is nothing there. It's the disabled, the outcast of society. The lowly bar. Oh, this one, somebody's come out of lowly bar. Yeah. May you move out of lowly bar. Yeah. May you move out of lowly bar. Yeah. Turn of the outcast yeah. and be in Jerusalem. Yeah. Glory be to God. Yeah. Bible says that he is going to dwell. We'll go down. Don't worry. David is looking. He is the king. He's sitting in his throne. And he's looking, is there anybody else in this house of Jonathan that I can do? I can show some kindness. Ladies and gentlemen, there's somebody somewhere. I want to announce to you that there's somebody somewhere. Point to your sister or your brother or your say, There's somebody somewhere. Who is looking to show you some kindness for the sake of your God? Is dead, but the son that they left behind, the fish of 
a cripple is now receiving an elevation, a promotion. Kindness is coming his way. Look at the way he's, he's going to do it. He said, I will restore you all the land that, you, that belonged to your grandfather for. And you always eat, always eat at my table. Actually, the Bible said he ate at the king's table until his death. Let's go to verse 8. Look at what is happening here. Mephishobah bowed down and said, What is your servant that you should notice a dead dog? That is the state that he was in. He counted himself as nobody. To the extent that he called himself a dead dog. Oh, may you come alive, somebody this morning. Yeah. If you are downtrodden, if you are broken in your heart, if you are considering it's not all worth it. Look at what a man is saying. He described himself like he's a dead dog. He saw himself as a dead dog. A man did you nothing. But God has a different plan for you. God had a different plan for you. So this morning I want to announce to you. Your God, our God, has a different plan for you that you know about. Hallelujah. This morning I want to encourage you. Don't give up. Some kindness is coming your way. Some goodness is coming your way. Hallelujah. And verse 9 says what? Look at what verse 9 says. Look at what he's doing. Then the king summoned Ziba, saw seven, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. Can you see somebody around Kelsey being restored and now he's going to be instantaneously rich? Yes, exactly. In instantaneously, his life has been, I receive what? A turn around. May you have a turn around. May you have a turn around. May you have a turn around. And expect kindness to be shown to you. Wherever you go this year, whoever you are meeting, expect kindness. Expect kindness. Expect kindness. You are aware with wickedness. Let wickedness be far from you. Because your case is different. You say, Pastor, why are you saying that? Because you are a child of God. Because you are a, you are a child, a servant of the most high. And therefore, you have every right to expect kindness to be shown to you. Let's look at what happened. Verse 10. It's up to 11. So, now, you and your sons, let's be speaking, and your servants are to farm the land for him and bring in the crop so that your master's grandson may be provided for. Look at that. And the fisherman, grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. Now, Ziba had 15 sons and 20 Seven. Now all of a sudden, he has become what? A master. And he goes seven. Somebody say, instant miracle. Instant miracle. One more time, instant miracle. Instant miracle. Kindness that has a miracle, miraculous element. That's what you see there. All of a sudden, somebody who is a cripple, who nobody will consider or count, or even want to stop by and say, how are you? Maybe I guess this is pastor's so he may be sitting by the roadside begging. Now he's standing eating at the king's table with the best room, with servants, take coating, and say, Hi, Master, are, are you okay? Is there any more? Can we top it up for you, Master? Oh, somebody feel good, somebody. Oh, feel good. Can you imagine being called to Buckingham Palace for a banquet? I see myself and I'm walking in my telco in a very beautiful white bow tie. Gentlemen walking down the aisle. You go and sit down and you are welcome. Welcome. Oh, hello. Oh, thank you very much. Show your seat. You sit comfortably, majestically. And so, what would you like? Ha! Ah, we have X, we have that, we have that. Sometimes you know, they will tell you, you even forget before they, they get to the end. You don't even know what he said. Uh, uh, <laughs> He just said, Our oh, thing, I can have it. Hallelujah. He is spoiled for choice. Let me say, spoiled for choice. Hallelujah. And verse 11, the last one. The Bible says, What? Then Ziba said to the king, Your servant to do whatever my Lord the king commands his servant to do. So Mephishabeth ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Power of kindness. Power of kindness. Receive this power of 
kindness over your life, over your household. Expect kindness. Ladies and gentlemen, as a body of God, as a church, let's expect kindness. Good kindness, I mean. Expect kindness. Hallelujah. And expect goodness. Let's go to Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. I want to show you something. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. I said, desire goodness, God's goodness, and expect God's kindness to be shown to you. Amen. Look at kindness. Let's look at, just be, yeah. let's look at 2 Thessalonians 1. Oh, glory be to you. Have you been blessed this morning? Yes. Express some kindness. Kindness, yes. kindness, kindness. Hallelujah. Yes. Kindness, kindness, kindness. See, the world will want us to believe that everybody is wicked. Yeah? Or there's a crash. Yes. That thought is what is doing away with kindness. But what is the catch? There's no catch. One of the best ways to really enjoy kindness is that take it as given by God. That's right. That's right. There is no catch. There is no what? Catch. The English people have managed to, uh, I'm correct, isn't it? If somebody doing some kindness to you, oh, what's the catch? They don't find out. What's the catch? In other words, they think, once I'm doing some kindness, I'm also expecting yes. something in return. Don't go on that basis. If you do that, you will not see God's kindness. That's right. That's right. Go with a clear mind and receive kindness as given by the Lord. Are you with me? Yes. Kindness is the is a, when you do that way, it is the best way to be blessed. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Look at here. Paul, Silas, and Timothy. To the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. He said, Grace and peace to you from.